Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through a scenario of comparing sales and forecast. More specifically, as you can see in front of us here, we have a forecast line and a sales line that's both for historical but also future. Now the goal with this is that I would like to be able to create something a little bit more similar to what we see in front of us here, where we can actually split apart by time our landed sales historically, but then also essentially flatten out the sales going forward, but then also show what the growth might look like and a spread between it for any of the remaining forecast for only future months. So what we'll do is we'll actually walk through all the visual and DAX features in order to achieve this and some of the visual configurations to make it pop just a little bit more on the visual canvas itself. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start, let's walk through the result and then I'll also walk us through how to build it. So what I've done here is I've essentially split the data between the latest closed month that we have for our sales. In this case, August, 2024. So all of the sales before that are landed and actualized. So that's what's showing here. And then in that last month, I have anchored the data points to start from here and then move either out in a flat line for our future sales here which just simply takes this last value, pushes it forward. And then we also have the forecast line that increases. So we can also even see the spread between it using a band that we can actually add into here. So I think this is a great way to basically create your own forecast line, so to speak, but also to make sure that it is anchored here. Now coming over to the sales start, what we can see here is we have our historical forecast and our sales but I don't really need to see forecast historically. We've already had our sales data and it's already landed there. Now, one issue though, if I were to simply do a cutoff between the two of them, notice that the lines don't actually connect. So if I did any kind of logic to you know, forecast forward, the forecast value, keep historical sales, they wouldn't actually touch. So one of the things we'll have to consider to make sure that they connect is that for the last closed month, that forecast value actually meets or has the same value as sales. So the lines themselves touch from that point moving onwards. So the lines will accurately connect. So coming over to here, what I wanna do is I wanna walk through each of the calculations in turn. The first thing that I'm gonna do is open up a few of these panes here. Now I wanna get rid of my forecast line. And when I do that, the very first thing that I wanna do is to just take this last value, move it forward. So there's a couple things that I've done to get this. So I calculated my latest sales month, basically just getting the max from the calendar table where sales is greater than zero. So that's just a metric that I can reference multiple times. And I have a future sales calculation. So declaring a variable for my latest sales month. Now I'm also getting current month sales. So I'm calculating my sales. I am removing any filters for the calendar table. So it is ignoring all of the month and years on here and where the calendar month and year is equal to that last sales month. So this basically is a single fixed value of the current month of sales. And then what I want to do, because I don't want this to show on the entire line chart, only current forward, is it's going to do a switch true. And then if the max is greater than or equal to the latest sales month, current month sales, otherwise blank. So let's go ahead and add this onto the line chart here. And that connects it just from here going forward. That way, otherwise, this again would backfill all the way down. So that's that flattened line that I have. So let's polish this up just a little bit first. The format pane, I'm gonna come over to lines. I'm gonna to go to my sales future. And because again, it's kind of a forecasted, just flat line future forecast with this, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. Um, I prefer that to be less emphasized versus the other one. And let's also clean up the markers. I actually do like the markers to be, in this case, for design and aesthetic purposes. On my landed sales, I don't really need it to be on the other one. So if sales future, turn that off. There we go. And then let's go ahead and maybe change the line style to like a, I'll do like a dashed. I think that looks good enough there. So we have our sales. We have the flat line forecast essentially getting started. Now the next thing I want to do again is the forecast. Now I don't need all of my forecast. I only need my forecast value from here going forward. So that is over here if I move it out a bit, future forecast, open this up. Okay, so similarly, what I've done is a couple of things. I 
again, I'm going to reference that latest sales month. And now I'm going to do a couple of things. So if the calendar month and year is equal to the latest sales month, I'm returning the sales value. So like, let me just show you as an example, if I get rid of this, if I simply just returned the forecast amount, here is the problem. So we can see this and put this on the visual forecast and yeah, less than or equal to put this here. This would be the problem. They don't connect. So the workaround for this is when the periods are aligned for this forecast value, I'm swapping the actual forecast value for the last sales value, which is going to be in August of this month. So doing this means that now these two lines connect. So we're kind of hybridizing it a little bit. And if you hover over it, you're going to see the forecast equaling that. But that means that the line looks a little bit better because they've now connected on that spot on the chart. Cleaning this up once again, I'm going to go to forecast. Let's go ahead and make this a nice vibrant green. And um, I'll turn off the marker for it. Maybe I'll make this one a dotted with a little bit of a thicker line. I think that's good enough. Now that last little part that I want to do for a couple of other polishes on here, let's go ahead and go over to our error bars. I love error bars for so many different things. So in this case, I'm going to take the sales future, that flat line here, and I want to show the spread to my forecast. So sales future, turn it on, and I'm just simply going to take my forecast, add that to my upper bound. Now it's going to start by drawing lines and markers, which I don't actually need right now. So turning off bar, oh uh, yeah, and marker as well, and then going to error band, turning this on, and then we have that fill. So that could be any color that you need to. So you can either make it the um, blue or the green in this case. I'll go ahead and maybe for this example, make it green to match the forecast color, but it shows you the spread between those two. Uh, one last thing that I might mention to, to turn off is you see the upper. So if you don't want that, make sure your tooltip is off. So this way you see the line labels, but you don't get the error bar labels, but you get the coloring to fill in for that. And last but not least, as a final bit of polish, we're going to go to the series labels. And then this, bringing them in here, um, yeah, that should be good. That then gets the labels on the two lines that are actually going to extend out from there. So I, again, I really like this as a design methodology. I also have some data labels turned on in the final result. But I think this goes a long way in really helping to declutter a visual when you're having a lot of lines onto it and anchor everything from that essentially latest moment in time forward to allow you to see the spread out from that, but simplify the visual a little bit while still attaching everything. So hopefully this is something that you found useful. If there's any additions, modifications, or enhancements you'd personally do to this as well, or any ways that you want to uh, leverage it with any of the stuff that you'd be building, feel free to drop those down in the comments. As always, check out some of my content here in the upper left as well. And as always, liking, commenting, and sharing the video on social media does continue to help my channel grow. And with that, I will see you in my next video.